In this video, we're going to show you how to create your Model Geometry in STAD Pro Connect Edition. Now, your Model Geometry step in your workflow will represent one of the most significant changes from STAD Pro V8i to STAD Pro Connect Edition, as this is a step in your workflow that was most dependent on the icons within the old toolbars. But let's go ahead and see how everything you used to be able to do in STAD Pro V8i is still available in STAD Pro Connect Edition. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my workflow page control area and select my geometry tab. Now when my geometry tab is selected, my member, my nodes table, and my members table are going to appear in the data area. And I can start creating model geometry directly through these tables if I wish. So say for example, I'm going to go up to my nodes table. And I'm just going to enter some nodal coordinates here. They're still represented in X, Y, and Z and my y-axis is still my vertical axis in STAD Pro. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and dropped in some different uh, nodes within my model. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the nodes table. Now our current input units are set to kips and feet for both force and length. Now what if I wanted to enter this information in inches instead of feet or any other type of unit? To change my current input units, I'm going to go to the geometry tab in the page control area and I'm going to select my input units icon. And here I'm in the English unit system and I can change very seamlessly between inches and feet. I can do the same thing between pounds and kilopounds. And if I wanted to, I can also move over to a metric setup and just change your units and click on the apply button. Now directly in the data area I can also use this area to start modeling members just as I had before. Every member is defined by its starting and ending end and it represents basically your node A would be your starting node to node B your ending node. So we can enter that information directly into the data panel. So member number one goes from node one to two and I can repeat this process as I needed to. Now what if I'm creating plates instead of members? You're going to notice here I have my nodes tab and my members tab. Where is my plates table? Well if I'm working on plates instead of members, I'm going to go up to the geometry tab in my ribbon, which is where we're going to actually be spending most of our time for today's video. And I'm going to go to the plate layout icon and that's going to turn on my plates table. You can see here the plates table. If I want to go back to the beam layout, I'm going to come here, select beam layout. So that's going to turn on the different tables that we're used to selecting through the page control area at the left hand side for STAD Pro V8i. This is how we would go by selecting different layouts. I also have an items for our solid layout. Um, I can also um, go to, over to my physical members. And I also have the option for creating parametric models if you're used to using that workflow. Now that we've gotten comfortable with the data area, let me go ahead and start using some of the tools in the geometry tab in the ribbon. And let's focus first on the tools within the beam area. So I'm going to go and select my add beam tool. This tool was available in STAD Pro V8i. And just like in STAD Pro V8i, it has a pull down menu, which will provide you to access the other types of add beam tools. So let's go ahead and click add beam. Now I still have my status bar at the bottom of the screen to give me more information about the, what the program is going to expect me to do next. So here I can just select my starting node and my ending node. Now this tool can still be used to create beams between nodes and nodes may be created or dynamically generated at the time that you create the member. For instance, instead of selecting a node, I can select a member and the program will ask me if I want to add a node there and you can see here how quick and easy it is able to add some additional nodes if you don't have those nodes created already. You can see here it also segmented the members for which it's intersecting. This is in line with your typical analytical modeling workflow. So let me go ahead and create some additional members for this particular model. 
Okay. Now, once we are done using this tool, just like before, we're going to go ahead and want to deactivate it. That's going to return our self to the beam's cursor. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cursors now that we've got a little bit of model geometry created. Up in the ribbon, we're going to go to the Select tab, and we're going to find all of our cursors. Now, the Select tab in the ribbon basically replaces your cursor toolbar from STAD Pro VA.I, which is available over at the left-hand side of your screen, and it also replaces your Select menu bar item, and they're all organized very conveniently. So the first area would be our cursor. So here we have our beams cursor, where we can use that to select our members. The beam cursor works the exact same way that you're used to. We're going to hold down our control key, which is going to be used to select multiple members at one time. Click in the main window, still unselects all your selected members. We also have our nodes cursor. So here you can see how I can fence around a series of nodes to select them. In addition to that, if I wanted to select particular items, I could still use the data area to select those entities and um, to select your nodes or your members or your plates if you have that layout turned on right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other items and let's go ahead and take a look at the beams area. So here I could say, say I wanted to select all my columns. I'm gonna come here and say select parallel to Y. So all those different areas are available. I can select by property name if my members had properties yet. And I could select by missing property, which is a convenient way to check to see if any members in your model are missing a property assignment or a material property. And we also still have the functionality of creating groups to make your selection process a little bit easier. Now, as you select different entities within your STAD Pro model, you're gonna notice that you have additional tools available in your ribbon. So here you can see I have a member selected, which gives me a new Beam Tools tab in my ribbon. Now all of these tools that are available in the new Beam Tools tab are still available in the Geometry tab. They just might appear a little bit larger to help you navigate to the correct tool that you're looking for. So that's true for any type of entity you select. Uh, for example, let's come back here and select some nodes. And you can see I have some nodes tools now available. If I had selected some plates, I'd have some plate tools available. Again, all of these tools are typically also available in the geometry tab, just with smaller icon views. So depending upon which way you like to, to create your model geometry. Now that we've created a little bit of geometry, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the additional tools in the geometry tab. So we have a tool to insert nodes, and this still begins the same way it had in STAD Pro V8I. I'm going to start by selecting a member. I can tell the program I want to insert a node, and let's go ahead and add a few different points. Let's go ahead and add three points along my member, and we'll click OK. And you can see that nodes have been added, and the members have been segmented. We can also do that for multiple members at one time. Let's go ahead and say insert node, and this time I'll add a midpoint. We can come back, add our beams as needed. And we're going to turn off that tool once we're done. So we have all the same add geometry tools that we had before, which basically replaces your geometry toolbar in STAD Pro v in addition to that, we also had a generate toolbar, which will allow you access to create copies of your model and create maybe a translational or rotational repeat. Those tools are still available. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to create all of my model geometry. I'm going to highlight everything. And let's go ahead and find our structure tools. And this will provide you access to some of those types of commands. Like say, for example, I want to go to translational repeat. And I want to create multiple copies of this particular frame. Well, let's go ahead and go in the Z direction. I want to create maybe three steps. We'll go ahead and do a default step spacing of 30 feet. I'm going to link my steps. And I'm going to select an open base. Let's go ahead and click 
OK. And you can see how quick and easy it was able to access those tools. Now the last command we'll take a look at for modeling your structure geometry is access to our structure wizard. So up in the geometry tab in our ribbon toolbar, we're going to find our structure wizard, which again, this will provide you access to all of the prototype models that are included in STAD Pro. You can start a model by going directly to the structure wizard to start by creating your model geometry, or you can access this area of the program after you've already created some geometry if you want to add some new pieces. And you can see here we have all the same types of prototypes that we had available before, and it works the exact same way as before. Now, while you're modeling your structure geometry, you may decide that you would like to view different perspectives or view certain pieces of information in your main window. So let's now take a look at our view tab in our ribbon. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to maybe turn on some different label settings. Well, if I'm used to STAD Pro V8i, I could just right click in my main window and go to Structure Diagrams. And you can see this is still available in STAD Pro Connect Edition. And here, let's go ahead and select Labels. And you can see I can turn on any piece of information that I want. Say, for example, I want to turn on my node numbers. I could just click Apply, and then my node numbers are going to appear on my screen. So this is a useful area for you to go to be able to turn on any piece of information you're looking for. Now you're going to notice that your hotkeys are still available, the same exact ones as they were in STAD Pro V8i. So I come here and go Shift N to turn on and off those particular items. Now if I like using the ribbon toolbar, I'm going to find that same exact command up here for label settings. Brings me right back to the same exact dialog. And I also have a couple of quick access tools up here. So say, for example, I just want to quickly turn on my node labels. I have my beam labels as well. So I don't actually have to go to that dialog if I don't want to. Now, if I'd like to display uh, different perspectives of my model, I can go ahead and use any of the tools within this view tab. So right now I'm taking a look at an isometric view. Um, I could take a look at some different elevations or maybe even a plan view. I can still take a look at a particular area of my structure at one time, like say, for example, I am working on this particular frame. So I'm going to select the members I want to see. And I could just right click and say new view. This was available, same exact thing with your right click that we saw before. So I can go ahead and create a new view there. And then this tool is also available up in the ribbon toolbar. So let's go ahead and say new view here as well. We also have a quick new way to see just your selected objects if you want. So here I'm going to tell the program I want to view just my selected objects only. You're going to see it's going to be grayed in to let you know you're kind of in a partial viewing mode. I'm going to turn that off to see everything again. Or I'm just going to click on my display whole structure again as well. My um, arrow keys on my keyboard still work the same exact way. And your mouse to zoom in and out with your wheel um, still works the same way as it had in STAD Pro V8i. Now, if you're still getting comfortable with the graphical user interface and you're getting comfortable with the new look of the ribbon toolbar, we do have our help menu available. And let's go ahead and take a look at that so we can see what is available in the ribbon. So if I go up to the top of my screen, I'm going to click, I'm going to click on my help contents icon. Now STAD Pro Connect Edition includes all of our help information available online, which can be viewed through any web browser. What's really nice about it being online is it is completely searchable, and you are able to bookmark certain pages. So if there's particular pages you're going to quite frequently, you can go ahead and bookmark them. You can uh, copy them or send them in an email, and it'll give you a direct link to this information. So say, for example, I want a better description or a more in-depth description of all of the icons that are available in my ribbon. We're going to go to this Get Started area. 
I'm going to come down here and go to my application window layout. And then I'm going to go to my ribbon control reference. And here you can see I can select any tab within the ribbon, say for example the geometry tab, and I can review all the different icons that are available with a complete description of them next to it. So this will be a great place to go if you're still getting comfortable with the graphical representation of the icons. And again, most of these icons were still available in STAD Pro V8i. They're just organized slightly differently and some of them might have a different look and feel.